On a beautiful summer's day in August 1998, number 5637 departs from Cranmore Station. The distinctive Great Western blast from the chimney echoes around the Somerset countryside, evoking strong memories of a country branch line, which has now passed into history. The branch, known affectionately as the Strawberry Line, was connected at one end with the Great Western Railway West of England Main Line at Whittam, and with the Bristol to Taunton Main Line at Yatton. A weekday service of five to seven trains a day operated throughout the life of the line. Standard Great Western locomotives were used. Broad gauge 440s and saddle tanks operated in the early days. Homer, Virgil and Seneca were known to have been used between Whittam and Wells. The gauge conversion brought saddle tanks and the pre-war years brought pannier and prairie tanks to the line. GWR diesel rail cars appeared in 1946, and under British Railways, Ivert and Standard 262 tank engines also worked the line. The East Somerset Railway Broad Gauge Line from Whittam to Shepton Mallet opened on November the 9th, 1858 the line from Shepton Mallet to the East Somerset terminus at Wells came into use on March the 1st 1862. Whittam on the then single line branch of the Wilts, Somerset and Weymouth Railway opened on September the 1st 1856. Services for the East Somerset line to Wells used the bay platform which was unique in having a wooden overall roof that was built in 1870. Wanstrow, situated two and a quarter miles from Whittam, opened in 1860. The station was formed of a small station building upon a single platform and was paid for by local inhabitants as the East Somerset Railway could not afford to build one. The rear view of the station portrays the building works needed in order to bring the station up to the top of the embankment. Cranmore opened with the line in 1856. The station dealt with considerable limestone traffic from the nearby Waterlip Quarry. A GWR train for Whittam enters the station after the turn of the century. The terminal building for the line from Waterlip Quarry can be seen in the background. Wagons belonging to Mendip Mountain quarries and loaded with limestone are seen in this view with the station in the background. The first train to Shepton Mallet was hauled by Homer, a 440 bogey saddle tank. The locomotive was covered in flowers and the town band played See the Conquering Hero as the train arrived. The East Somerset Railway terminus at Wells was on the east side of Priory Road. It was completed on March the 1st, 1862. The Somerset Central Railway, the senior partner of what was to become the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, opened its branch from Glastonbury to Wells on March the 15th, 1859, and thus was the first railway to enter the cathedral city. A stone-built station building with an overall roof was provided and known as Priory Road from 1883. The S&D engine shed closed on October the 27th, 1951, followed by closure of the branch to passenger traffic two days later. The third and last station to be built was the terminal station of the Bristol and Exeter branch from Yatton and Cheddar, opening on April the 5th, 1870, and remaining a terminus until 1878 when through working between Yatton and Whittam was inaugurated by running over part of the s and goods yard on the level. Although Great Western trains did not call at Priory Road Station until October the 1st, 1934. 
Built in Dracut stone with the usual decorative barge boards and distinctive roof of alternating bands of plain and patterned tiles, the Bristol and Exeter station at Wells completed the trio of stations in the city. Each station was complete with its own staff, engine and goods sheds. The line from Yatton was completed in two stages. Yatton to Cheddar on August 3, 1869 and Cheddar to Wells on April 5, 1870. Dating from 1871, Wookie, the first station from Wells towards Yatton, had a single platform complete with timber station building and a small wooden signal cabin. Facilities included a goods shed and a rail connection to the nearby paper mills from 1879 until 1965. Lodge Hill, serving the nearby village of Westbury sub Mendip, was named after a 212 foot mound rising from the flat Cheddar Valley to avoid confusion with the important junction of the same name in Wiltshire. Dracut Station, with its name set in stone above the doorway and windows, also had a wooden signal cabin on the platform that had a gate wheel for operating the only level crossing between Wells and Yatton. A broad gauge Bristol and Exeter Pearson 440 saddle tank is pictured at Cheddar on the opening day of the line from Yatton. The station was the most elaborate on the whole line with its grand Brunellian overall roof. A refreshment room was provided for intrepid travellers. Punnets of strawberries are being loaded onto a ventilated van. Loading of strawberries when in season was intensive at stations along the Cheddar Valley and the busy scene here at Axbridge would be no different at other locations such as Lodge Hill or Dracut. The starting signal is lowered for a Yatton-bound train as the station staff pose for the camera. The station was built on a ledge cut into the side of the Mendip Hills. The Bristol and Exeter signal box standing on the down platform was replaced in 1907. The only tunnel on the line was Shoot Shelve, Originally named Woodborough, the station at Winscombe was popular with commuters to Bristol. The GWR structure seen here replaced the original Bristol and Exeter timber building in 1905. The old station building was hauled away and then became the village shop. Sanford and Banwell station was built in the usual solid style of the Bristol and Exeter railway. Facilities included a goods shed and yard. The goods loop was completed in 1905 and remained until 1964. Rail connection existed from 1935 until 1964 to the Sandford Quarry of Rhodes Reconstruction Limited. The company operated their own Sentinel locomotives. Congresbury Station achieved junction status when the Rington Vale Light Railway opened on December the 4th, 1901. Crucial support for the line had come from the Bristol Waterworks Company, who were on the verge of constructing a large reservoir and pumping station at Blagdon. The six and three quarter mile long line had stations at Rington, Langford, Burrington, and the terminal station was at Blagdon. Sidings for coal traffic were laid, serving the waterworks pumping station. A small siding served the estate of Sir W. H. Wills. The area was known locally as Imperial Valley, as much of the local wealth was generated by tobacco. The initial service on the line consisted of four trains per day, one of which ran as a mixed train. Passenger services were withdrawn from the line from September the 14th, 1931. The broad gauge Bristol and Exeter Railway opened from Bristol to Bridgewater on June the 14th, 1841. Yatton opened as Clevedon Road, 
but was subsequently renamed in 1847, when the branch to Clevedon opened on July the 28th. When the line to Cheddar was opened in 1869, a bay for the trains was provided on the downside of the main line. Now for a nostalgic look back at the Cheddar Valley line. We start our journey at Shepton Mallet, the station being situated at the end of the High Street and more convenient for the townspeople than the Somerset and Dorset station at Charlton Road. A 262 tank engine arrives with a passenger train and after the passengers have boarded, the train then departs for Whittam. A GWR water column and lower quadrant signals reflect the former GWR ownership of the line. The train now crosses the main road at Kilver Street level crossing on the outskirts of Shepton Mallet and passes the small ground frame that controlled the gates. The East Somerset line was carried over the Somerset and Dorset main line by two bridges. Peter Wood, former steam fireman from Wells Shed, recalls a nickname given by railwaymen to Cranmore. Cranmore Station was never ever called Cranmore, I don't think by anybody on British Railways. It's always known as Siberia. Yeah. I've seen wagons macked up Siberia. Bleak, a wind howls up that yeah. Vale of Avalon and hits it. And terrible, cold, nasty, but Siberia. Climbing the 1 in 56 incline to Mays Down Bridge, we pass through Dalting Cutting, from which the stone for the original Cranmore station was excavated when the line was constructed. Arriving at Cranmore, we view the bitumen rail tanks that were unloaded here the contents being transported by road tankers to the local quarries for use in the tar-making process. The camera pans across to the down platform with its timber-built waiting room. The signal box dating from 1904 was closed on May the 17th, 1963. Two and a quarter miles from Cranmore, we stop at the small station of Wanstro. Typically, no passengers await the train. A short goods loop and cattle dock opened west of the station in January 1927. We are now running down the bank towards Whittam and the main line. The signal box with its attendant signals hoves into view and we run into the branch bay alongside the water tank. The station was on the superb West of England main line and a succession of express trains would pass through, especially on summer Saturdays, although only local and Weymouth services stopped here. The station received the suffix Somerset in 1958 to avoid confusion with the station in Essex with the same name. An express thunders through and a new DMU in green cat's whisker livery rattles through on the down main line, followed by another up service running through the station.
Collet 060, number 2217, arrives from Froome with a two-coach train and, after running through, reverses into the Branch Bay with the guard giving the tip when to stop. A six-car DMU arrives from Weymouth and, after depositing parcels and what few passengers have alighted, pulls away to the next stop at Froome. We now depart from Whittam and return to the branch, climbing the 1 in 47 gradient to Wanstro, where, as before, no passengers await to board our train. Paul Fry started his own railway career at Wells Priory Road Station. He now recalls an incident concerning a goat with an appetite for glue. I can remember one instance when uh, we had a consignment of about 20 or 30 cartons came down to go away um, because we had to stick ledger labels on all of them and we used to use a great glue pot with a big brush and we used to deliberately paste the glue on and stick the label on that you see and, and then we put all these things in the guard's van to go to Glastonbury and there was also a goat that um, was travelling by train that day and they put the goat in the guard's van well appears that uh, on the way out to Glasgow, the goat took a fancy to the glue and licked all the labels off, not only the ledger labels that we stuck on, but also the destination labels as well. So by the time they got to Glastonbury, they couldn't decide where half these things had to go. So they had to come all the way back to Wales by the next train, and we had to ring up Claire and say, uh, we've got some parcels down here. <laughs> we knew they'd come from you, but we don't know where they've got to go. So we had to get some new labels and stick on but. I think the goat must have taken a fancy to the, to the glue that they'd used, which is rather amusing. The train enters the down platform at Cranmore Station, whilst a small girl waves excitedly at the camera. We roll through the sylvan Somerset countryside behind our Class 22. Wisps of steam drift around the carriages. Haymaking is in full swing during the fine weather, and Shepton Mallet Station appears, with a good view of the signal box and quarry wagons in the sidings bound for Dulcote Quarry. A split-screen Morris Thousand van in GPO livery stands on the up platform, with mail bags being loaded aboard the train. The advance starting signal gives us a clear road to Wells as we run down the bank upon which freight trains had their work cut out, struggling up from Dulcot and Wells. Paul Fry now recalls the day when too many passengers climbed aboard an ex-GWR diesel rail car. Someone came down and said that he wanted to book a Sunday school outing to Western Supermare. So I said, yes, OK, and I told him how much it would cost, and. Come the day of the outing, he arrived with all these 60 children like that. But the thing that I failed to remember, which I ought to have known, was that the train they were going on uh, was a limited accommodation diesel rail car. And uh, when the train 